Hey, this is Mark from Mark Blogs Watches. Thanks for joining me. Um, I will uh, not be looking at you too much. I will be looking at the road. Safety first, people. Safety first. Quick fist watch check. It's the uh, El Primero. And um, I've been wearing that watch, this watch. I've been wearing it quite a lot lately, which is natural because it only, you know, I've only gotten it a couple days ago. Um, I have made a couple of videos on the uh, El Primero already. Um, and I will, of course, give you a, uh, a more detailed review and, uh, and get into, I'll, I'll do a video called, you know, one or two weeks on the wrist, you know, when I, when I get around to it. Sorry about the rambling. Um, I, got a, uh, I got a ladder, um, actually a comment I do read my comments, guys. So if you got questions and comments, put them you know, put them in the uh, in the comments. And um, as it strikes my fancy, and as I get a moment, I will try and answer them either in the comments or maybe even a video. But this was a fellow um, who is lusting after the new root beer two tone Rolex GMT. Here's a quick look at that new root beer GMT in two-tone from Rolex. It's beautiful, but I'm a little concerned about those center links being so shiny. Is this a great everyday watch? Well, let's talk about that in the rest of this video. Rolex GMT, and he said he had the opportunity to purchase it through his authorized dealer. And he had two questions. He wanted to know, do I consider it a true sports watch, number one? And number two, he doesn't plan on being buried in it, so he wants to know if it will hold value for resale. So um, let's, let's address this real quick. First, is a two-tone GMT a true sports watch? And the answer is yes, it's a, I, I think so. It's a true sports watch, it's, a, it's an oyster case, it's good for, I forget, it's a trip lock, isn't it guys? Sorry, I haven't done my research. But um, it's, it's good for one to 300 meters, I forget which, but tell me in the comments which one of those it is. Um, I have the same case in the Batman, although there's an updated movement in the root beer. Um, and you, it's more than adequate. You can go swimming with it. It's a, it's a wonderful watch. And I, I think that root beer, I think I actually like it better than the stainless steel Pepsi. The thing is, is that um, the root beer has got those, uh, it's got a gold crown, gold bezel, and gold center links on the bracelet. So that's gonna make it a little bit heavier because those gold center links are, um, are solid. Unlike the, uh, the older GMTs, they're solid. So it's gonna add some heft to that watch, which I like, not everybody does. But the key point is um, it's going to be a softer metal than stainless steel. And so you're gonna see scratches on it much more readily, especially on the clasp, desk diving. You know, it's gonna be a bit of a problem. So. Is it a true sports watch? Yeah, because it's a it's a Rolex GMT, but it's it's nowhere near as durable as the stainless steel version. So, if you're the kind of guy who wants to wear a watch, not just to work, not just to events, but if it's your one true watch, you want to go to the beach with it, you want to do gardening with it, um, you want to wear it to the gym, then don't get it. You know, uh, either get a black one or get a uh, get the Batman. I, I suppose you could get the Pepsi too. I'm just not a giant fan of that um, of that Jubilee bracelet. So my answer is it is a sports watch but it is definitely going to uh, attract more damage than a steel version. So if you're uh, if you want it for special events go ahead. If you want it for a daily wear I wouldn't do it. Now in terms of resale value I think you're going to be fine long term on resale value. I don't think it's going to pop. You're not going to turn around one day and find out you've got the Paul Newman Daytona on your hands and all of a sudden it's worth a fortune. That's not going to happen, I don't think, because that hasn't really hardly happened with uh, any two-tone uh, Rolex sports watches. They, they have definitely lagged on price uh, and collectability. They have lagged. Um, that being said, I don't think you're going to get seriously hurt. However, you should plan on keeping that watch for five to ten years if you're going to keep having your money uh, and the reason for that is if you buy it at retail now plus you pay sales tax and then in a year you need to sell it 
if you get it cleaned up, you could probably sell it for close to what you purchased it for on eBay, but then you're gonna get nailed for 10% um, fees. So, you know, if you're, listen, if you're selling a $14,000 item for, uh, you know, on eBay, you're, you're right away, you're paying $1,400, uh, which puts you into the high 12s. You're paying $1,400 in eBay commissions, plus another 3% to PayPal, which is almost unavoidable, and you're accepting a certain amount of risk. That's if you sell it retail. If you sell it to a dealer, uh, you're going to get 10 for it. So you will have rented it, but you know it'll have cost you three, four thousand dollars to have owned that watch for a couple of years. So um, I would really only buy it if you were looking at it for a super long-term keeper. And uh, if you want a daily wear, well then take a pass on that and find something in all steel, whether it be the Batman or the black. So that is my answer. Uh, tell me what you think of my, of my thoughts on that particular watch. Let me know. Did I get this one right, guys? And uh, hey, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate when you thumbs me up, when you join, when you, you know, all that YouTube stuff. So stick with me, guys. Peace out from Goldberg here at Mark Vlogs Watches. Paint the sky your favorite color.